Hello and welcome to a Transmuting the Eye Focus Insight session. This is going to be a collective reading using the energy check format in which we're going to go through seven of the 3D chakras. This session is energetically aimed at those who identify as healing healers or generational transmuters. Uh, there's a link in the description box for how I define healing healers and generational transmuters. On doing this reading on 10-16-2024, shortly after I began to feel the energy of the upcoming new moon in Aries, which is, depending on where you are, where I am, it, it's arriving tomorrow, 10-17-2024. And I've been feeling the planetary shifts and well, wind phases quite a bit, as many of us have, but this particular full moon in Aries, I think I said, just said new moon, so full moon in Aries on 1017. But I started feeling it with great intensity yesterday. I mean, I wanted to do this reading yesterday, but it didn't happen. So here we are today. These energies may be most resonant during this time. I do work really deeply with the divine feminine where time is nonlinear, right? Here, time is a spiral. So if and when you find this message, that there is the divine timing and likely there's something here meant for you whenever you come across this message. I've asked Spirit to give me the messages that would be of support to the ears listening and to the greater good for all. So use your discernment for what is for you and leave behind what is not. You just know also in the description there's more information about transmuting the eye insight sessions in terms of what it is. The two go ahead and get started with a card from an Oracle deck called Oracle of the Seven Energies. This initial card is meant to give us sort of a beginning understanding of the general message that might come through. So, card 25. Birds of a feather. Two or five could be an important number for you or seven. Birds of a feather. Key concepts here, sharing, community, a sense of belonging, fellowship with like-hearted people, understanding the concept of we before me. Have you ever wondered how people naturally gravitate to one another and discover a surprising intimacy and connection? There is a kind of magnetic energy, like an invisible ray of light, that gently pulls people together to form something beautiful that can be shared. As in the saying, birds of a feather flock together. It comes from an instinctual need for belonging, we might say. We need community to survive, to thrive, and grow. We humans are social creatures, after all. None of us are meant to be alone. The concept of belonging is playing an important role in your life currently. Perhaps you recently found yourself in a group where you knew you were in the right place. Trust those strands of connection, for now is the time to thrive in that community. What you will find is a deeper and more expansive way of looking at the world by bearing yourself to others and sharing ideas, hopes, and dreams. However long you stay here, in this journey of becoming who you're meant to be, connecting to community and participating in fellowship is the best thing for you right now. You will flourish as part of a network of like-minded and like-hearted people. Stick to what feels good and resonates with your heart as true. When you understand the value of this community, you will discover everything you're hoping for and much more than you're expecting. So right off the bat, what's coming up for me is that as I'm doing this reading, right, we've got this full moon in Aries and from my very limited understanding of astrology. And I'll also add a link in the description for a evolutionary astrologer that I follow and a shamanic astrologer. Actually, I'll leave links for both their channels. One is Madrona's Pulse and the other is the Cosmic Guidance. I really appreciate both of those folks in the way that they share the message of what's happening planetarily. But from my understanding is we are in a moment where it's sort of holding the both end of how do we 
dig deep into the shadow parts of ourselves that are coming up and take care of that, like, right, step into that, do that work while also maintaining connection to the world around us, right? So there's that balance of the inward and the outward. Let's see what happens in this message. While this message says to put the we before the me, I I think that we do that with balance, right? So sometimes in a world in which many of us are struggling with codependency and those of us who identify as being indoctrinated in false notions of the feminine, you know, we've been taught to nurture everybody else before ourselves. And so I, I don't recommend that. I recommend a balance of like, take care of the I so that when you're in the we, you're also nurturing the we is what I would say. But do agree with birds of a feather. So the more we step into our transmuting the I work, the more we know who we are and elevate to that energy, the more we bring that energy in and find our community and sense of belonging. So with that, I'm going to step into the deck that I created, the Transmuting the I deck, which is based on this idea of transmuting oppression, suppression, and control from within based on factors that exist without, on the outside. So structures of, of oppression, suppression, and control that exist in the external world, but really focusing on what can I do, where's my power in terms of how I respond or react to that from my eye to remember that I have choice, I have free will, and really focus of how do I move in that power with a sense of power with others, power from within, as opposed to power over. I'm going to start with the root energy center located at the base of your spine. Considerations regarding your sense of stability safety and security here we have a card that's in the heart family which signifies the divine feminine the supremacy of feeling emotional decision making intuitive guidance heart-led action and what we're being given is the consideration to flow and the gift of emotions to deepen connections to self others and ancestors and it's interesting because it's the energy of this card is really the sacral chakra and water, this sense of flow. And I think since we pulled it in the place of the root, I imagine that for some folks, there's some interplay that's happening between your sacral chakra and your root chakra. And so if you are experiencing some stagnancy around your creative energy or a sense of passion or unclear around desires, there could be a call to drop a little bit into your root and draw energy from your root and from earth to clear that up, to maybe ask for some guidance around what is happening at the sacral but through your root and to really flow in the gift of the emotions that are gonna come up, right? And really deepen that connection. For some folks, it might be that, especially in this time with the really powerful full moon in Aries, Pluto going direct in Capricorn, lots of other planetary energy coming at us at the moment, that there's a need to really drop into your roots. And whereas a lot of people feel like emotions get housed at the sacral chakra, but it might be that some of your emotions are getting triggered by what's happening in your root. And so it, the offering is to really step into divine feminine energy of really thinking about it from your intuition, really holding yourself and whatever's happening for you with a great amount of compassion, grace, and acceptance. And so it's a moment to kind of when you're sitting in your root chakra to really think about your perceptions over action the moment what is happening for you in terms of your sense of self your existence and and it's interesting going back to the card that we open with that birds of the feather and the connection to community there might be something there too for you to look into the divine masculine is going to tend to move more in an individualistic way not toxic individualism or rugged individualism but tempered, but it's really individualistic in the way it moves, whereas the divine feminine is going to 
ask us to move within a sense of community and connection to others. Now, understand, I don't know where you are in your level of understanding of energies. When I talk about divine feminine, divine masculine, that I am talking about the energies. I am not talking about twin flame stuff. I am not talking about gender at all in any way, shape or form as is understood in our 3D reality. I'm talking about it solely from an energetic standpoint. If it's helpful to you, think about it in terms of yin and yang. So anyway, that's what I'm getting here at the root. For some folks, it's going to be around dropping into whatever's happening at the root. So your thoughts, your emotions, your definitions, your beliefs, and your behaviors around what's happening for you in terms of your sense of stability, your sense of safety, your feeling of security, your feeling of your existence, who your I is, to drop into that in a very divine feminine way. So flow with what comes, with what emotions come up to help you deepen your connection to yourself, to others, and to your ancestors. As we move up into the sacral chakra, we are being offered the idea to step into sacred ritual. This is a time for love and creativity. The sacral chakra is going to talk about many things, but here we're looking at considerations regarding creativity, sexuality, and desires. And so it's really interesting that we pulled the sacred ritual card, which in my deck is a journey card. And if you are familiar with the traditional tarot, it's the equivalent of the empress card. And so we're talking about flow, creating the divine feminine. Again, we're being asked to really step out of the usual masculine ways that our current construct wants to push us to move a lot of external movement action do 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 this is again pulling us into this idea of going inward and perceiving intuitiving stepping into love creativity and also getting a message of like sacred ritual means in this time with everything that's happening this energy of the aries full moon it's going to be really important to slow down. Sacred ritual to me means engaging in activities that I am intentionally doing slowly. So this could be just sitting in silence, sitting tones on Schumann residences or waves or rain or a bonfire or walking if you have access to outdoor areas that you can access safely walking outside with trees under uh, a canopy of a forest or through grass. If you can take your shoes off, do that. Go walk slowly and just let whatever comes in, comes in. Again, this is going to feed. We're at the sacral chakra, but it's going to feed up from the root. And your roots, you are of earth. Earth is of you. And so that energy that you pull when you do this sacred ritual is going to come from the earth. You can also, if you have access to water, ocean, streams, rivers, you can put your feet in water, do that as well. It could be taking a walk with your dog. If you're in a city, that's fine. Take a walk with your dog. Don't necessarily distract yourself with anything. If you use music or audible to distract yourself, and I don't say that with judgment because I do that. And sometimes when it comes to sacred ritual, I have to be very intentional to not put the headphones in so that I can hear the birds, I can hear the wind, I can hear things other than distractions. It could also be taking a bath, taking a long shower. Well, we want to conserve water, right? So long is relative, right? So, but taking, engaging water in some way, and water keeps coming back to me because of that first, like I said, the, or at the root, we got this card that's the heart and it's a water card at the heart. It's like as divine feminine, the divine feminine can show up. The other thing is it's the, this sacral ritual card at the sacral is, is number three. So here again, it is talking about, you could take that as groups. Remember our grounding card with birds of a feather. So there could be something here that's happening for you at the sacral shop, or maybe there's some creativity that you're about to step into with other folks in collaboration with other people, or it could be something that you're creating for yourself that's going to lead to collaboration with others. Three is also about growth and generally creativity itself. So 
that's what could be happening there for folks. For folks who are feeling like you're set and you're not blocked, this could just be a confirmation, right? A confirmation that you are aware of what's happening planetarily. You are aware of your natal chart and how it's interacting with the current design of the cosmos and you are contemplating or already in sacred ritual settings and doing things drawing singing dancing cooking a healthy meal for yourself and others that kind of stuff so this is confirmation that that's going to feed you at the sacral chakra center Next, we were offered at the at the solar plexus. So this is going to be considerations regarding imminent power. Imminent, not to be mistaken with the word imminent in terms of happening any at any moment. Imminent in terms of within. So power within, choices, free will, and our sense of worth. Here we're given uh, considerations from the Pillar of Truth, and the Pillar of Truth really concerns a strong moral compass, your internal guidance mechanisms, well-defined values, a sense of direction, and which it's really beautiful that this comes in at the solar plexus, right? Because this is about really owning how I move in the world, my power, my power from within, not seeking to define power solely as an external force, understanding that it also exists as an internal energy. And within that, understanding choices and free will. Now understand, I totally get that some of us are given choices that we don't like. There's still choices nonetheless. And so part of the work at the solar plexus is to understand that. And, and the consideration being given here is to integrate the reality of choice and free wills into your de definition of value and sense of direction. And really, so at the solar plexus, this coming in is really beautiful because it tells me that some of us in this moment need to take a moment to really look at how am I defining value and where I'm going in the sense of I have a choice in how I define value. I also have a choice in the direction that I go. For some of us, we're so overwhelmed with the world. The, the, the matrix or the construct is um, targeting us so much that while we have choices, we feel like all those choices suck. I want to acknowledge that. And at the same time, this might be coming in because there's, there's a place where we can find some balance or make a choice in terms of integrating the reality that is actually before us. And this, it, at a moment of a full moon, it really allows us that illumination to see a little bit more clearly, even when it's things that we don't necessarily want to see. And, it, and I feel like starting us out at our root in terms of flow and the gift of the emotions that might come up, and then moving into that sacred ritual, I feel like the spirit could be telling us that in doing that, that seeking the truth to integrate at the solar plexus, it might actually bring up some really deep emotions that we are not used to confronting or we need a little bit of support in sort of confronting or being in com conversation with. And that's where that sacred ritual is going to become really important. So it, at minimum, it could just be taking five minutes of silence. If you got a house full of folks, just maybe if you have a car going out and sitting in your car for five minutes and breathing. For folks who have a little bit more time, actually taking uh, that long bath and, and being with yourself or taking the walk. And so that's at the sacral. What truth am I telling myself about what is choice and what is free will in my current situation? And really... Think about how that definition of how I'm defining what I value and what my sense of direction is, is affecting my understanding of choice and free will, what I'm seeing. Reality can vary for each of us in any moment. It is a lens shift in perspective. And so for folks who are feeling like you have a really good understanding of choice and free will, see this as an affirmation and support. We move up into the heart energy center. And here we're looking at considerations regarding love, compassion, grace, empathy, our capacity to love ourselves and others in the divine sense of love. And the consideration we're being offered is in the pillar of 
spirit. And this is connected to your higher consciousness, your spirit guides, your higher self source. Here we're being offered the consideration to explore and deepen trust in your intuition. It's an ace card, meaning it's coming in. So at the heart, I get the feeling that at the heart chakra, that there's something that wants to come in, which makes sense again with what's happening with the Aries full moon and the offering that's being made with all the planetary energy that's happening right now, particularly for folks. If you're a healing healer, generational transmuter, you know, birds of a feather flock together, which is what we started with. And I am making the assumption that folks who are coming to my reading are coming because we are energetically aligned in some way. And we have been doing so much work. Some of us for six months, six years, 16 years, right? Particularly 2023, I think 2024 has been this energy of us really transmuting the eye and trying to figure out how do I move in the world in a way that is going to create a reality and reflect the world I want to see. And I think for many of us, this consideration that's coming in at the heart space is an affirmation of like explore and deepen trust in your intuition. Spirit is coming in with that gift of like, you've done the work. Here is an offering in response to the journey you've been on. And so at the heart space, the consideration is to really deepen one's trust in your intuition. And as I'd mentioned when we were talking about integrating reality and that sacred ritual, so the integration of reality and choice at the solar plexus, I think as it moves up into the heart, it's really understanding that we do have choice and free will to contemplate what are the different things available to us in this realm, in this reality at this moment. Whereas the external world that is right now is all about erring on the side of toxic masculinity, of overly doing, of overly being logic, of overly being time consumed and linear. This is asking us to really deepen and step into the intuitive aspect of ourselves, to really step into the trust of all the seeds that we planted are ready to start sort of bursting. They're percolating in the soil. So I was going to say bursting through, but then I had this idea of if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, we're moving into fall. So things are going to start going deep into the earth. And so it does say explore and deepen your trust and your intuition. So maybe perhaps the message is to just really trust that something is coming in and it's percolating. We're doing that work. We're doing that work. And at the heart level, spirit is moving and offering synchronicities offering um, messages that as you integrate your reality of choice and free will into how you're defining value and sense of direction and stepping into sacred rituals, making time for love and creativity and slowly in the gift of emotions, that you can trust in your intuition. You can trust in, in what's happening for you. You can release doubt to the dreams that you're having. Yeah, you had that dream for a reason. Don't talk yourself out of it. The walk that you went on, yeah, you saw those birds perch the way that they perched to the song they sang, and you felt something immediately. Yeah, trust that. Don't talk yourself out of it, right? Your animal companion, like, did something that really made you think, oh, right, you're a deeper spirit than I thought, and you're giving me a message. Yes, trust that. Don't talk yourself out of it. You, you need a friend or you need connection, and that friend calls or texts you or sends the message that you needed to hear. Yes, right? Trust in your intuition. Don't talk yourself out of it. That's what the construct would love you to do. As we move into the throat chakra here, we're asking for considerations around listening skills and your voice. How am I hearing the world? How am I hearing my truth? How am I hearing multiple truths? And how am I using my voice? How am I saying what I need to say? How am I embracing compassion, grace, truth, anger, despair, irritation, love, as I use my voice and as I move through? And here... We are being offered the consideration of vulnerability and at that throat chakra to let your inner child run free. 
let your inner child run free. And so there's a beautiful connection between deepening trust and intuition. I believe that one's intuition is the strongest when we connect with our inner child and really let that deepest inner child be free, not be controlled by the constructs of our current society. Now, this vulnerability card is a journey card. It is the equivalent to the sun card and this idea of like childlike innocence. So this tells me again right now, when I said that, when I thought, oh, the sun card, again, I, I did think Aries. Aries is a fire sign. And so there's something here about in this moment, stepping into vulnerability in the sense of being our deepest through his self and not giving a fuck what anybody else thinks, right? So you're doing this in the sense of also understanding those of us who are healing healers and generational transmuters, not giving a fuck doesn't mean stepping on other people, not being ruggedly individual, but being our truest selves while we make space for other folks as well. Being our truest selves and an understanding that sometimes my truest self might um, still be in, in the ego and there's some transmuting the eye that I need to work on. There's some conversations that I want to have with my deepest part. And so to get to your most authentic inner child, that son, there might be some work for some folks that you still need to do, which is why at the root, we got the consideration to flow in the gift of emotion, to deepen your connection to yourself and others and understand that there's a connection to your sacral chakra. Time for love and creativity. Maybe it's time to spend time with your inner child in a loving and creative way. So no matter how that inner child shows up for you in the time that you're spending in transmuting your eye, you are letting them run free. When you go out for that walk or take that shower or play with your dog or play with your kids or whatever, that you are really tapping into your solar plexus in which we said integrate the reality of choice and free will into your definition of value and sense of direction so maybe there was an inkling of like your your kid or your dog runs free and you can see their happiness and normally you would just walk behind them and catch up maybe there's an inkling if you are bodily able to run up with them or roll up with them and laugh and be free those are the kind of things that we're looking at right now in this moment to really access the shift and the transformational energy that is upon us. Next, we move into the third eye, which are considerations regarding our access to intuition, perceptions, all of our clear senses. Here we're given a consideration in the pillar of the mind, which is the masculine. Here is logic, rational thought science, empirical evidence. It's, it is the idea of a lack of emotion in decision-making. So it's more about action, direction, confidence. The interesting thing is, is that we are given that within the element of earth. And the offering is to connect breath to the root chakra, to ground an overactive mind. Beautiful. Thank you, spirit. So it's connecting from the third eye energy center it's bringing us all the way back down into our roots and the flow and the gift of emotions to, to deepen our connection to ourselves and others and to our ancestors. It's asking us to go beyond the mind. Connect your breath to your root chakra to ground an overactive mind. And so at this moment with all the energy that's happening, there's so much coming at us. And I think that's why spirit kept giving me this idea of that sacred ritual to slow down. If you're having difficulty slowing down the mind, what meditators will call monkey mind. It's when your thoughts go wild and you can't really settle. It's offering to remember the breath, connect your breath to the root chakra. This could be a visualization in which when you're, you're walking, doing dishes, actually sitting in meditation to really visualize your root chakra and roots. I like to, to visualize roots coming from the soles of my feet and really going and connecting with the earth. A lot of times I'll ask earth permission. I've never had her say no. So asking for permission so I can really feel those roots sink in and then visualizing my breath. And every time I breathe in, I can feel the earth humming. I'm breathing in and breathing out with the earth. And that tends to help ground us and bring in an overactive mind. And I just was given again, this is really important because the other thing that we're dealing with is really intense solar storms a lot of energy in the past uh year but particularly the past couple of days if you live on the east coast upper east coast or alaska or canada 
you've seen it in the skies. You've seen the aurora borealis coming down further south than it's ever come down. That's because there's so much energy coming in from solar flares. And so this is also, it's also really important in this time to ground um, your energy and uh, your focus. And that's going to bring us to our crown chakra. And I really love this in the crown chakra. We're being offered the, the transmute card. Trust that you have the power to transmute. It is the equivalent to the full card, leap of faith, trust in the universe. Trust in yourself that you have the power to transmute what comes toward you. Transmuting means, right, to really to make an active, intentional response to the choices, to the things that are coming at you, to transmute it, to choose to engage it from your whole self, not from the rugged individualistic self that this construct tells us we have to be. Know that at your crown chakra, there are the considerations around connecting to your purpose, integration of divine knowledge, being in the divine flow. This is a reading for healing healers for generational transmitters meaning we've been doing this work. I mean, there's a lot of folks out there who ain't, they ain't doing shit. Um, and this doesn't make us better or more loved than any of them at, by any means. But also there's an acknowledgement. There's many of us who are actively doing the work to be the change we want to see in the world as much as that saying has been co-opted by the masses. But really understanding that the peace, love, compassion, grace that I can cultivate inward is what then what will be the reality outward. And we've been doing this work. And I feel like the consideration here is an acknowledgement at the crown chakra. Trust that you have the power to transmute because you are divinely connected. You've been walking the path. You are in the flow. We started with down at the root. We started with the sacral chakra energy wanting to commune with our root chakra through the divine feminine, through water, through the flow in the gift of emotions. It's such a, a beautiful reading. It, it does bring me back to the birds of a feather. This, this is the work that we've all been doing. A lot of us have been doing it individually because that's what spirit required of us or like we needed to do it individually, I believe, because as healing healers, many of us are healing from intense trauma that caused us to be extremely codependent and uh, horrible to ourselves. And we've been doing the work to turn that around, to seek interdependence in a way that is in balance with who we are and who other people are, in interdependence with the earth, in interdependence with the, with the cosmos. And this work is what's bringing us into community with others. I'm doing this reading because this is stuff that I've been doing, but I know I'm not alone. And I know that some folks need to have an understanding that while we may not know each other personally, we belong to each other. And we are all do, and many of us are doing this work for ourselves and for the greater good. And so I feel like that's what the universe wants to offer since this is an energy check on our um, chakras, I'm going to go ahead and pull a card from a deck called Archangel Chakra Oracles, asking Archangel Energy, what is a particular focus area that we can step into as we are considering this energy check and these considerations? Beautiful. And we're being offered to really step into our third eye. You'll know when you know. Dear one, it takes patience, practice, and trust for you to receive, translate, and integrate divine guidance. For now, ask me to help you and then turn it over to God. Trust you will know when you know. There will be no question about what to do unless you don't like the answer. No judgment here, only love and understanding. That is from Archangel Zadkiel. If you are into invocations, here's the offering. Archangel Zadkio. Remove all expectations and fears I have to receiving divine guidance about. You place your situation there. Help me to know the answer without question and have the strength to take the actions needed. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you. Connect your breath to the root chakra to ground an overactive mind. Definitely connects to this card in terms of like it takes patience, practice, and trust for you to receive. And sometimes when we are deep in a struggle, deep in something that we're waiting for, that we really want or need, it can be really hard to get out of getting stuck in the thoughts about it over and over. Connecting your breath to your root chakra, that can really help you follow through with what Archangel Zedkiel is offering, right? That patience, the practice, and the trust to sort of drop into your body and understand that it's in progress. It's coming. It's coming. It's coming. And I really do understand that sometimes it's not enough. You know, you're like, how many times can I hear that it's coming? And that's where at your crown chakra, trust that you can transmute. You have the power to transmute. Some of this work is just going to be, how can I look at this differently? How do I transmute how I'm experiencing this moment in a way that offers me compassion, grace, kindness, in an uh, intuitive flow, in balance with action, with logic, with whatever the next step needs to be. We're going to close out with a final message from a deck called Divine Nature, asking the universe, guides, ancestors, spirits to help us with one final message to integrate the overall transmuting the I message that was all first year to our healing healers and generational transmuters hearing this message. And we've been given embodied grace. Number 44. It's sometimes a Herculean task, but allowing things to be as they are ushers us into a state of grace. We can't force, compel, or dictate grace. It arrives by itself from the coattails of surrender. While a capitalistic system that profits from you feeling less than would have you believe that true strength comes by force, nature would have you believe that prowess and power come from balance. The interplay between an active will and a surrender to what is. When we refuse to take things personally and see ourselves as part of the living organism of nature, we can accept what is, while also engaging our creativity to shape our personal reality. Between those opposite energies lies grace and the fierce, tender heart of surrender. Ashe. That's beautiful. I feel like it really ties well into the Archangel card that we just pulled as well as the insight session overall. So I'm going to leave it there and ask each of you in these times, no matter when you're finding this insight session, but particularly if you're finding it during this week of the full moon in Aries, but to really remember to hold yourself with great compassion, grace, empathy, love, gratitude. Because there's so much going on. There's so much happening in the world. There's so much happening in our outer world. There's so much happening in our inner worlds. And the greatest thing that I can hold space for is an understanding that we are all doing the best that we can. Whether I understand what your best is or not does not matter. You trust that you're doing the best that you can. We send you so much love and grace. I thank the ancestors, spirits, planets, stars, and angels for this guidance and message. My energy stays with me. Your energy stays with you. As above, so below. As within, so without. As the universe, so the soul. Hashem. Here on YouTube, Rooted Cosmic Soul offers Transmuting the I Insight Session Collective Readings, in which we engage one out of 16 intentionally designed and divined layouts for the collective session. If you'd like to learn more and or schedule a one-on-one -on -one insight session, links can be found in the description. Also, Rooted Cosmic Soul offers Story Time, offering high vibration storytelling via original magical reality fiction and alignment time, offering considerations for spiritual care grounded in the concepts of transmuting the eye. 
The best way to engage and to know when we post is by subscribing to the Rooted Cosmic Soul channel. You are deeply appreciated. Thank you for spending time with us. Infinite love and gratitude.